so neuro RX is really shorthand for neuroaesthetics. Um, and we coined that term because, um, well, we and others really felt that, you know, this term neuroaesthetics is pretty daunting. And what we really want to do is bring all stakeholders in. So we want to make sure that community arts, people, uh, cultural arts organizations, um, artists and practitioners who are doing stuff in really interesting ways feel like they are part of this community where you're bringing arts together for health and well-being. And, you know, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to be in neuro arts. You don't have to be a neuroscientist. You don't have to be a social worker. You can be an artist or someone who loves art, who knows and believes that it's really important for others to experience that work or for you to experience it yourself, whether you're making it or beholding it. And so we really wanted to sort of make this whole field more accessible. Um, the Neural Arts Blueprint itself is a project that we um, launched together with the Aspen Institute. Um, the Aspen's Health Medicine and Society Group, a woman named Ruth Katz, who is a public health um, uh, really luminary, um, came, we came together about a year ago um, wanting to really think about how you could coalesce this field, how you could bring all these different pieces together so that you could weave a piece of fabric where the arts for health and well-being were in essence everywhere. So all the places that Linda's talking about and all the places where we know youth need more arts in their lives as, as tool for different issues um, or where seniors um, or older folks need it to help with um, healthy aging or where it's needed for um, veterans and active military where PTSD or traumatic brain injury has really caused great damage to them and their families. And so anywhere you look, there's a place for arts in service of humanity. And the Neural Arts Blueprint is really about creating a plan, um, a roadmap, if you will, to be able to help us build that. So we've analyzed research, we've looked at practice very deeply across the world, and we're now also looking at the, um, the economics of this. So what happens when you honor the arts? What does that mean for reducing stigma and um, helping under-resourced communities who really, um, I think if COVID has shown us anything, is it's been a spotlight on how under-resourced communities have gotten hit so hard because of uh, health inequities, racial injustice, um, the inability to have access, just basic access to fundamentals like food and clean water. And um, nowadays I would say internet, um, you know, to be able to connect to the world. So the Blueprint's really focused on trying to create some short-term wins, but also a long-term plan to be able to make the arts a thing and um, around health and well-being, and also in, in thinking about how it may help us with learning. So I'm really, I'm also really excited about it. Um, it's sort of an audacious project. Um, our lab is working on it, um, uh, but many, many, many people around the country and around the world are part of it. And we really feel like we're building a community. Um, so it's, it's, it's great. Mm -hmm.